recording, start the live transcripts. All righty. Well, welcome to the June 15th uh, Chaos DE DEI meeting. Uh, it's good to have you here. If you could add yourself to the agenda and tell us the last um, wild animal that you have seen. Oh, well, I think that was like 20 minutes ago, a deer. Well, that counts. <laughs> That definitely counts. Elizabeth, do you do iNaturalist at all? Yes, I love that app. And it's oh. open source. I don't know if you knew that, but it is open source. I didn't. What's your, um, I'll, I'll follow you on there. What's your thingy? I don't know. Uh, probably just like Elizabeth Barron or something. All right, oh. well, figure it out and send it my way. <laughs> cool. Yes, awesome. Sometimes I can, I I can confirm your, what's that? Sometimes I do my own little bio <clears throat> blip by yeah. myself, so. Oh yeah, well, that's perfect. Awesome. I can, I can confirm your insect observations. Hey, fantastic. <laughs> I'm never too sure, so. <laughs> well, the, the AI in that tool is pretty nice. Super nice, yeah. And the, the community is really nice too. At least I haven't had any experience because I've mis, you know, mislabeled a few and they just jump in and are like, actually, this is a blah, blah because of this, you know, like they're super nice. So Christy saw a tiger. <laughs> yeah, I was at the zoo. <laughs> okay, making sure. <laughs> yeah. I was just like walking down the street and uh, okay, that's good. Do we have an armadillo? I'm guessing that's from the Texan in the room. <laughs> uh, chipmunk, very nice. Chipmunks are awfully cute. I will say that. I see them right out my window right now. <laughs> Do you feed them? I try not to. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need more chipmunks. <laughs> they feed themselves, I bet. <laughs> <laughs> I once saw it. I had a... a Oh, we have people could somebody let's see we have precious and Amy. Um, I had a chipmunk story where um, more than you need to know, but like it there was a, a hole in the bottom of a dumpster. You know what I mean? And the chipmunk like where water could drain out and the chipmunk went into the hole and ate so much it couldn't fit back out. <laughs> <laughs> There's a Winnie the Pooh story about <laughs> poo going into the honey. <laughs> and uh eating so much he can't get back out yes it was exactly that then he's in, he's yeah. in piglet's little tree burrow for so long <laughs> all right well why why don't we go ahead and get started i'll share my screen here all right um so the first thing is the uh, a badging appreciation event elizabeth do you want to talk talk about that a little bit Sure, I'm also going to let Katie oh, okay. uh, actually Katie you start and then I'll I had a question at the end of your if you want to just go through the agenda really quick if that's cool right on okay all right so Matt uh, Cantu and I met yesterday and put together a rough agenda and we know the times on this are just super rough sketched but um we figured we'll start we'll open a little early and have some social time I'll do an introduction of like just a welcome. Um, and then Elizabeth, if you can do some of the updates and insights about like how long it's been going on. We're gonna have people there that aren't just from badging. So we wanna let everybody know kind of what the project is. Um, some of the statistics and metrics that we have. Um, and then introduce the reviewers, do our little thank you, like have them tell us a little bit about themselves. And um, Matt will do a kind of a final thank you to all of the reviewers, or I'm sorry, um, Matt G, if you want to do a little bit of um, an introduction to our project badging initiative and some of the new opportunities that might be coming available. Um, Matt will do a thank you and kind of just do a final, we really appreciate your efforts for our our reviewers and then we'll have our we'll open up the whiteboard again 
since this will be on Big Blue Button, it will we'll have a community whiteboard capability so everybody can just kind of draw and chat and interact with each other. And then after we'll say goodbyes and then mm -hmm. sign off the meeting by about nine o'clock. All right. That sounds good. And I guess, Elizabeth, do you, I know we had talked in Slack a little bit about maybe how many reviewers we have, um, how many projects have been badged, or not projects, I'm sorry, how many events have been badged, how many um, current reviewers we have. If what I would like to know is it's yeah. going to be hard to do round or like a hot potato for them to introduce themselves because nobody will know exactly which who on the call are the reviewers. Do we can we get the list um, based on the names that are in the um, big blue button chat of who the reviewers are in there? Like, yeah. Do you have a list we can compare it to so that we know which one who there are reviewers? Yeah, the only um, the only information that we collect, I think, is GitHub usernames. Like, uh, okay, so, but I don't know if you asked for that in the registration. I don't think we did. I don't think we did. We could. I could just have a. If you're a reviewer here, can you um, please add a emoji to your name tag or something, or to your yeah. um, user thing on the call. That would be excellent. I think that's a great idea. Okay. So that that's what I have. What questions do you have for me? I have no questions. This looks great. Elizabeth, did you say you had a question at the end? I do. Um, so we had talked a little bit about doing some special swag for them. Um, obviously, I did not get that together <laughs> in time. Um, I did get uh, like very, very minimal Zazzle store done last week, but it's not great. And it has like two things in it and I'm not a designer, so I don't even know if like that's good. I just put literally just put chaos on a t-shirt and on a coffee mug. And so um, do, my question is, do we want to share this with them? So like if they, if we want to send them some swag we have to like get set up like a gift card thing and pay for the stuff ahead of time and send them the gift card. So I just, mm -hmm. I didn't know if that was the right way to do it um, or like how we wanted to do it. If we want to just mention, Hey, by the way, um, we are working on some special swag for you. We just don't have it ready yet. Or do we want to not say anything at all? Like what, what do we want to do? What, what is this? What about like Matt did with us when he got the chaos stickers for the people who are on the badging committee? Uh, and um, he got our addresses and just sent us things in the mail with like a little thank you note. So that it came with a thank you note. If we wanted to get a sticker that had like the chaos logo and then rock star reviewer or something above and below it or just something cute specifically for the reviewers and go on a sticker site and get them ordered. I don't know if that would be, because I still have that little thank you note stuck to my desk. It just makes me smile whenever I see it because Matt put a lot of thought and effort into that. Yeah, go ahead, Ruth. Yeah, um, sorry, I joined in halfway in conversation, but I think the thank you note for like international like um contributors and reviewers i don't think mine came through and i did even follow up I, it was just as you mentioned this case i just remembered that you know we had to i think gift cards also work maybe we could do that with cards because then the cost of shipping like international is like so much so i don't know mm -hmm. yes yeah, so i do thank you cards for chaos cast um, and I think we have a pretty high success rate of getting them through, but yeah, but yeah, they're just cards and they just have like the international sticker on them or stamp on them. 
Um, so if we wanted to do something more, I, I would personally rather do something like Zazzle because it is a super, it's a, it's kind of a complicated process to ship internationally anyway. And there is like, we all have had issues in the past. So that's why I kind of was like, if, if they do Zazzle, like Zazzle handles all of that and we don't have to handle any of that stuff. So um, that's kind of what my thinking was there. I do like the idea of a thank you card. Um, I'm just a little like personally, selfishly, I'm a little worried about my own bandwidth and, and send, sending those out. So if we had, if I had help with that, I would be totally down to do that I, card. Yeah. If, if you can get, if you can get me some cards, I would be happy to help with that. Okay. Okay. Right. The cards I, I have, would need the, I would need to get the thank you cards here in order to do it though. And the stickers. Or whatever we're going to put in them, a sticker. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. What is, does everybody think that that's okay? Is that enough? What do we, what do we want to do? That's very thoughtful for what it's worth. So I, one comment from me is, could you also give me or come up with like an approximate cost from the Zazzle store? Like if we think about the number of people that might request stuff. Yeah. How many Go ahead, oh, I was gonna say, how many active reviewers do we have? I know you were looking at that number. Yeah, we have 16, I believe. Oh, wait, I just put that, I put that in the chat yesterday. Hang on one second, let me look again. Uh, yeah, 16 active, four new, so 20 total. Um, and then we have six that are on hiatus that we would want to also include, I imagine, because um, they have done in the past. So that's 26. And so I think that cards would be great, but yeah, that, that will be a little bit time consuming, I think. So I would love some help on that <laughs> if someone's willing to do that. I mean, I can, I can help as well with the, just like the handwritten card is what you're talking about. Yeah, and just like the whole process of like, you know, putting them in envelopes, getting them stamped, getting them addressed. So like I can work on, maybe at the event we have a doc where we ask, no, I don't want that. At the event, maybe we can have them email the address to us. Something. Hey, um, well, uh, if they can get us their address and information, if you could get us the cards and like it, the stickers wouldn't be available yet, but if you could get us the cards to write the notes at least. You could, um, if you have them, you could just bring them to us next week because we're going to see each other. I only have chaos. We wouldn't have to send. Yeah, but. Uh, we would actually just need the chaos, just single chaos one. That yeah, there's a, um, there's a, a company I use all the time for cards that um, I use in my photography stuff. And um, so I could just design like just a more of generic thank you from chaos. And um, I can get those printed and I, can I sh have them shipped straight? Well, no, that's okay. I was gonna have them shipped straight to you, Katie, but I, like, I don't wanna like dump all that on you. But yes, oh, I can get them printed, sorry. What about using some of your a photo that you would, do you have a, <laughs> I'm just thinking. You know what? I do have many, many hearts in nature, like little, when I see hearts, like, chomped out of leaves or whatever like would that be appropriate to just be like a little heart yeah here's a heart here's a mushroom that looks like a heart thanks for being a reviewer yeah that'd be perfect. <laughs> well that'd we be also good. don't we also don't need a card but i think the ones matt sent don't actually say chaos on the card they just say thank you so they're oh. just thank you notes okay well that would be easier but um and then we put a chaos sticker in it for them. Do you have chaos stickers, Sean or Elizabeth? I have chaos stickers. Could you bring some to Austin? Yeah. Or Katie? Yep. So, yeah, I'm just going to walk over and put them in my stuff right now. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. All right. Thanks everybody for like talking this through with me. I was having a kind of a mental block against it. So thank you. I like the yeah, mushroom hurt idea. Awesome next week. Say that again, Amy. We, I'm sorry. Who all is coming to Austin next week? And do we have something set to do? Oh, yes. So it's already in the Slack channel. It's um, the Bat Bridge and Chewies. What night? That's Not true. Sure. 
TBD. <laughs> Um, not the first, not Monday night and not, um, I think Tuesday night is the all conference, um, thing at Stubbs. I think those are the only, if anybody has the, um, has been invited to that sponsor, um, event, then we have to consider that or that, um, a partner event or whatever. There's an invitation only event. That's the only other evening activity that's planned. I think outside of that, we're pretty open. All right, because I'm going to come up Tuesday and Thursday. Amy, there's a Slack channel we just started like just now for OSS okay. folks to coordinate with each other. So sweet. I just dropped that in the chat. Sweet, sweet. All right. Um, Cool. Katie or Elizabeth, anything else on this? And oh, but I was also going to just say on the the dollars, if you could tell me, Elizabeth, like from the Zazzle store, I'm totally cool with like getting things to reviewers. If we do like cards first and then like, you know, something else from the store second, that's fine. Um, but just it might be easiest to get the money to come like request funds from our chaos account, not necessarily the university accounts. Sometimes like getting the universities to pay to the Zazzle store, like sets off weird <laughs> university alarm bells. Yeah, I totally get it, totally get it. Because <laughs> um, then if you can get that price, then we can kind of request, put in that request to the finance team. You know what I mean? To send some of that money. And it, it could just be an approximate. So. All right, cool. All right. Um, let's see. Just a note. We're just following the, the agenda here. We're not going to have meetings for the next two weeks in the DEI working group because of OSSNA and kind of leading into the US 4th of July holiday. So our next meeting will be three weeks from today. So July 6th. All right, um, burnout session. So would anybody, I think Matthew, you had had some comments on this as well. And Ruth, I don't know if there's things that you wanna bring up, the email, <clears throat> whatever it might be. Yeah, um, so Elizabeth and I kind of like put together like an email um, to send to the, um, registrants you check it so one to like run it through everyone yeah we just wanted to make sure it sounded okay to everyone i looked through it and thought it looked great i'll just add that Yeah, it looks good. Do we want to mention any code of conduct things? Like, I didn't see it in here, but like. Was it in the registration itself? I don't know. Because if it was, then you don't need to, yeah. unless you want to just put a reminder, but if it was in the registration, you should be good. I'm not sure that it, that it was in the registration. Yeah, it wasn't. I have the link. I'll, I'll link it. Yeah. yeah. My my only other thought about this was, and I didn't mention it before, but I'll say it now. Oops, excuse me. <laughs> Just in case, is that like there's not a lot of specifics about like what we'd be discussing, and I don't know how long we want this message to be, but it, I noticed since there's a lot of discussion, it, sometimes I find it useful to sort of offer some of the kinds of things that we would be discussing, but then people might not read this email. So then I held back. Anyway, that was my only possible thought, but now I'm just going to say it now rather than actually write that. Matthew, do you think these two could be built out just a little bit? Yeah, like I would have, like, 
that's where I almost I started writing a comment under the encouraging group participation. And then I was looking back at the slides, but I, I do feel like this really sums it up well. So if the goal of this email is just to give people an overview of what's happening, then I think it does its job perfectly. If the goal of this email is also to give people time to think about some of these issues a little bit more ahead of time, then, then we could add more question you know we could just add some of like and some of the possible or some of the discussion topics will be blank so that's all what do people think i think the email is pretty good as it is we could um what about providing a link to do you want to share the slides ahead of time? That might take care of that. Yeah, I think so. Maybe share like um, access to view the slides. Yeah, yeah so that's a great idea. Okay. Yeah, so I like that. Could somebody put like the... Something like this. It's very wordy. <laughs> or even just the session agenda is available here. The, and I guess in that scenario, the here would be the one. <laughs> that, that was exactly why I typed those things. <laughs> Because I had written session agenda and I didn't know where to put the link. <laughs> All right, cool. I'm sure, I'm sure people will understand. <laughs> All right, right on. All Looks right, cool. great. Uh, and then the next thing was the. Uh, it, it was the the slides. Um, Let's see. Yeah, we just changed a couple of the slides. We just wanted to make sure everybody knew that and was okay with it. Mostly for you, Matthew, <laughs> since you were the one who kind of put them together. We changed oh, yeah. the first part from introductions to welcome activity um, on the agenda. Um, that way, because we thought if we wanted to make it clear that if somebody wanted to stay anonymous, they could, but then we're going to like do it introductions, which is weird. Like how do you opt out of that? So we thought, well, maybe we'll do like more of an icebreaker, which the welcome activity is going to be like, what tool is your favorite tool to, um, that makes your life better in your, as a maintainer in open source. So something just generic, people can opt in if they want. And then we figured we would do the introduction part of it when they would share their experience. So like, tell us, you know, what project you want, if you want, tell us your experience, like just leave it a little more fluid that way. Is that okay with everybody? That sounds really good. Yeah, that yeah. sounds good. And then we also added on slide seven, which is what we thought where the actual discussion part would come in. We, we added that first question because we didn't, actually ever ask that of them. And I think that that was something to just kind of call out explicitly, like, hey, you want to share your experience. And then and now that we've done that, now let's talk about how you, you know, identify, how you identify it, how you prevent it, how you measure it, those, those kinds of more like less feely kind of things, I guess. I don't know how to say it, but if that makes sense. It does. And I think this the discussion discussion so matthew what came up yesterday in the community call armstrong brought it up was to position it a little bit to talk about experiences that community managers have had and in ways that they think about burnout as opposed to like here's the chaos way of burnout <laughs> like this is how you must think about it just it was just a repositioning of the the text ever so slightly yeah, that that's great. I, should we put that it. on? Oh, sorry, Matthew. Sorry. Should we put that on its own slide, or should we leave it in this bullet list? I think it's here. I had done. I had just changed this a little bit yesterday. 
after Armstrong's comments to be a little bit more like I think I um, I don't remember like maybe added the starters that weren't there before I kind of forget what I did but it was just it was basically just taking the text and put just twisting it around a little bit to to kind of solicit that from the participants as opposed to talking to the participants about it because the, the hope is is that as Armstrong had brought up is that we can learn a lot about what communities um, do with respect to burnout and update our metric or um, I don't know make a blog post about what we learned that we hadn't considered yeah that was great <laughs> did it again okay go ahead <clears throat> you should just both do one two three and then you can talk at the same time <laughs> elizabeth did you have a comment too no all right um so this is good to go then is that right yeah yeah okay. i think so yeah all right um okay great thank you the last thing on the agenda for today is I think that was a question oh. that <laughs> so um who wants to like present the burnout metric what was this Ruth there was a question yeah. oh yeah if anyone wants to like present volunteers like present the burnout metric Yeah, yeah, the question is on the um on the meeting minutes. <laughs> the last, yeah, that one. Gotcha. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out where, <laughs> where you're getting this from, and I got it now. You know, I um my recommendation would be to oops, wherever I wherever it is. Not there. Wherever, oh my gosh. Anyway, oh there it is. Um, to not necessarily like walk through the entirety of the metric, because <laughs> that can be a little yeah. dry sometimes. The slides, like during the slide presentation, like from, um, can you go back to the slides? Uh, yeah. yeah, like running through like from the start to then the discussion, not necessarily the start, maybe from things like three down to the discussion. Yeah, because I was thinking of facilitating like the session, like the welcome activity, then someone will just like pick the burnout metric part. So is your thought about how to, who wants to kind of move through these three or four yeah. slides. Yep. Um, well, who, who's, who's leading? I guess I don't know who is leading what parts of the slide deck. Katie's moment. leading them all with Matt. Who is? Katie. Just, okay. I don't know. I don't know who I've seemed possible. Elizabeth, do we know? Like, who's who's saying hi? I think Welcome that's what session. that's what we want to figure oh. out. Oh, okay. <laughs> I think. And I think Sean's talking about a different event. So. No. Oh. <laughs> maybe I am yeah. talking. I was. Uh, yeah. Maybe I am. I could. I could lead it yeah. if no one. Take it I off. mean, maybe Ruth leads this one. Sorry, I was on the last event in my head. Yeah, I could take it up. So I, I guess my, maybe my thoughts are, Ruth, you could say like, hi, you know, here, like welcome and all that kind of stuff and just kind of give the setup to the mm -hmm. burnout metric, kind of maybe through slide six. And then mm -hmm. um, it'd be nice, maybe Elizabeth, could you maybe lead the discussion? Sure. Or you don't want to, do you not want to? 
<laughs> no, it's fine. it's fine. I was going to be the co-host and like the monitor of taking notes and. Um, oh, okay. But that's okay. I, I can do whatever, whatever we want. Because okay, I know I'm also the hub. There. Anyway. Sorry. Matthew, we're also available. I was just going to say, I'm also the help available to help in, in, in any way too, whether you want me to take notes or, or present or whatever. Uh, Matt, actually, so then Matthew, would you, would you be okay with just kind of doing slide seven and eight, like just kind of facilitating feedback from the group? I'm totally fine with that. If okay. you'd like help. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That would be okay. awesome. Okay, yeah, so I'd be happy to. Totally. Right um, so then it's it's kind of Ruth one through six, which is setting setting up the burnout metric, and then handing off to Matthew for like tell us your experiences kind of thing. Um, and then maybe return to Ruth after the discussion to say thanks and goodbye. At that point, maybe whomever is feeling <laughs> it's fried to say goodbye. Yeah, I think I'll think with like Matthew over maybe for the so we can maybe run through how we want to. Okay. Yeah. So I, can that... the, I can do this wrap up if and if anybody doesn't mind. I'll I'll do the wrap up. How's that? Oh, okay, that's great. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> All right, right on. So I think then that addresses kind of this question plus, <laughs> plus all the other things. All right, cool. Okay, uh, any other comments on the burnout session? Yeah, so I think what we just decided kind of uh, matches with that agenda on back on slide two. So I think we should even be able to keep track that that way well, it does yeah <laughs> so perfect yeah all right perfect <laughs> cool thank you everybody um thank you who's taking notes too and then and elizabeth are you are you going to be taking notes during the session? Is that what I heard you saying, like the anonymous notes? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, we thought it might be collaborative. I know Sophia has thoughts on this too, but we thought it might be collaborative, but I just wanted to try to capture some high level themes if possible. Okay. So, and also I'll just want to be there as a backup because we do have like 50 people signed up for this. Yeah. Okay. So I so wanted to be the like moderator. To, yeah. yeah, to like okay. get people out if they're getting- Why don't- well, I'll plan on helping you do that, Elizabeth. Like okay. I, you and I can have a document that we share. Okay. And like, if there's some management that needs to be done, yeah, somebody can still take notes <laughs> while the yeah. others. Yeah. Okay, makes sense. <laughs> so you're like the backup to my backup to the. Yeah, and, Love and it. maybe you and I could just take notes in this. We could just create it. Is the document going to be available to everybody at the session? The notes document, or do you think it would just be you and me? That's a great question. I don't know. I don't know what would be the best. What do you think? Um, I, I, in open source, my inclination is always towards a shared document. And yeah, that would be my inclination, I guess. Yeah, I think that's good. Let's do that. Okay, and then we could also like just tell people like, hey, here are the docs. You know, if there's things that you, you wish we hadn't written down, <laughs> you feel free to 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 strike it out, and we won't we won't include it. Or if you feel like you've said something that we noted and you were trying to stay stay anonymous, and you feel like this de-anonymizes you, also just now's the time to strike it out. Okay, right on. Um, and I yeah. think some of you are like community managers and maybe know more about some of this stuff, but I, I do, I, the point you just made Elizabeth about being 50 people signing up and 35 minutes for a discussion and moderating, like how, 
like if we should put limits on how long people talk or if it should just be a more kind of like raise your hand and go through and share one at a time and just do as many as we can. But I, I didn't know if anyone had, you know, ideas about how they expected that to work in terms of how, how participatory it is or how long people talk. Uh, yeah, that, that was another reason why we decided to take off the introductions as well, because we're like, yeah, that's going to be the whole time. It's just people introducing themselves. <laughs> then we say goodbye. So um, that's a great, that's a great question. I, I think it could go a few ways. Like, I think I really like the idea of just like, raise your hand. We'll, we'll go down the list, um, you know, take a couple minutes, but remember there's other people that also want to share just like reminding people that yeah, like, cause I, I'm sure people can get very passionate about this and probably have like long stories. So um, yeah, just maybe kind of being aware of that. And I, I don't know that I would, I have seen people set like the timers and like when the timer goes off, you're done. So you can do that. Um, I don't know how you feel about that though, Matthew, if that's a little yeah, harsh. I, I feel like that's a little harsh as well. Right? But again, you know, I, I know that some of you might have done this more often. I, I feel like I'm, so I'm also a yoga and meditation teacher and I'm used to people like going on and on and, and learning how to, how to, you know, remind people it's not a therapy session, but I think that, um, you know, in general, just letting people know ahead of time, I, people usually I would expect are going to be respectful and, and, and get it, you know, like just repeating, like it's 35 minutes, there's 50 of us. So if you have something to add, please do. And then, and then helping move the discussion along if necessary, politely. Yeah. It so. sounds like you'll be fine. <laughs> you'll yeah, be fine. I think you've got this covered. Um, one, a few thoughts on this too, maybe, um, we could use the raise hand feature that <clears throat> is, that works really well, I think. Yeah. Yep. Okay. That's what I that's what I'm planning to do. Doing. Okay. And then maybe um, ask people like which of these points they're speaking to. So kind of help focus people. Like I'd like to talk a little bit about how I how we identify signs of burnout before it happens in our community. It's a thought. It just it was to help kind of structure the comments that people provide. That's a good idea. I'm typing. I'm typing furiously in the background. Okay. <laughs> then we could just leave this slide up, and maybe maybe we could instead of points, we could make this um, that, and then say people could say I'd like to speak to point three. Would people be okay with that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh yeah. Okay. All right, cool. Great discussion. Um, now, any, anything else on the session? All good. All right. Well, uh, we have no time left and <laughs> I, I do need to put this out here. So, and I, if we could, if people could provide feedback in an asynchronous mode on this, that would be great. So as part of project badging, we have right now, we're looking at four metrics that we would ask applicants to address. And these are the metrics. It's newcomer experience, recognizing contributors, how they address project burnout in their community, and then how they address inclusive leadership. And again, the idea is, is that we ask them to create a, a DEI.MD file, and we ask the applicants to provide evidence as to how their community addresses the newcomer experience or burnout or recognizing contributions uh, or inclusive leadership. And this is the link to all the kind of related metrics. And there are a variety of different ways that people can address this. So we don't have like some fixed number. 
of things that people must do or must not do within their community, but we're just really asking them to reflect on, on how they address uh, these things uh, within their project. The one metric that we do not have at the moment is newcomer experience. And so this has been a big, big effort of our own in the chaos project and one that we've been working on pretty hard, I'd say over the last year. So right now the metric itself is in a that this very early state of of development. And so part of what we need to do is start describing like you know what what this metric is in the description, what the objective of this metric would be, like why do we even need such a metric to start to you know, kind of qualify what the newcomer experience is, how you might go about measuring newcomer experience. So there's just all the things that are in a regular metric. Um, but we knew we do need this to be released as part of project badging. So maybe the call, maybe the action item to people is to take a look at this. So if you were to think about in your own projects how you might evaluate the newcomer experience or you know kind of put the newcomer experience as part of uh part of what you do within your community why do we need to care about the new newcomer experience why is this important what do we gain by even reflecting on the newcomer experience and if you could just drop ideas in here that would be great I hate to ask this, but I'm wondering if newcomer experience, as I reflect on it, is a metric model and not really a metric. I mean, because when I think about newcomer experience, there's a lot of, I mean, it's almost like very similar. When I start to think about it, it seems very similar to community welcomingness. It's just, I suppose, more concrete. So if you we can just go forward as a metric, but I, as I reflect on it, I think I'm going to unpack multiple specific data points that I would look at, which okay. makes it feel more like a metric model, but maybe we should go through that process before we yeah, jump, let's go ahead and the start there. Yeah, so, just, <laughs> so go ahead and start putting those comments in here. Okay. But the balance that we do have on, on any of these, and if newcomer experience becomes something else, that's okay. If it becomes like the title of it becomes something else, like that we're looking at a little bit more precisely, that's completely fine. So I'm not bound to this, this term at all. Um, but the thing we need to balance is if we put these metrics in front of an applicant, they need to be able to answer relatively quickly and easily how they attend to these things. And the reviewers also need to be able to reflect on the answers relatively quickly. So we, we've got to always narrow that part of the hourglass <laughs> to make sure that, that an application can move through the process at about the same rate that events move through the process, which is just maybe, you know, 20 to 30 minutes of, of kind of review with respect to the application. So that's all. We just, we can't unpack everything and look everywhere. No, I agree. So just a, so attention. I'll, I'll, to, uh, I'll yeah. do the asynchronous work and see where it lands. Yeah, that would be wonderful. Mm -hmm. I really, really appreciate that. And if it takes us in a slightly different direction, that's completely fine. Um, and then the last, the only other comment on this is, I've kind of been reflecting on the conversations that we have within this whole badging project. And one is about like asking applicants, like how have you designed your project in such a way that best centers DEI? So like, what have you done kind of structurally within your project to best center DEI? How do you in your project kind of reflect across all of the community members and think about um, DEI from a, a community member perspective. And then inclusive leadership is how do you have this path to growth for your members? So they're, they're trying to address kind of a few different things. One is a community design perspective. One is kind of working with the existing community members. And then one is kind of this path to leadership or this path to growth. 
which is inclusive leadership. Kind of, so if you kind of think along those lines as well, that we have these kind of different areas we're looking at within a, within a project. So I don't know if that made sense, but hopefully. If you were starting a new open source project, how would you design it <laughs> in such a way that welcomes new people? If you're an existing project, how do you look across all of your community members and, and recognize the good work that's being done? And if you're an existing project, how do you kind of promote people or encourage people to take on these, these leadership roles within your community and, and provide that path for people? So that's really kind of what these are. All right. Um, yeah, we are that's kind of cool. totally good. Got okay. It. Right on. So Thanks thank you, everybody. everybody. We'll see some of you in Austin. We'll see some of you on other community calls. We'll see some of you on Friday yeah. at, the, <laughs> at the event. So, see everyone later. See you. Talk to you all later. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye, everyone.